Today we're going to talk about how to install an additional servo on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. So I need to explain a couple of things that uh, will make sense in a moment. But uh, normally we have our servo port over here and that's used sometimes for the BL touch. So in order to use a second servo for something like a sled, what you'll need to do is find a port where you can get five volts and ground as well as signal. So the perfect place is actually in the end stops. So we have our X minimum end stop here. Then we have our Y minimum, our Z minimum. Then we have our filament detect, our second filament detect, and then we have our PS power on for detect. And inside here, you can see that there's a pin right here. This would actually be voltage or five volts. Then we have ground and then we have signal. And that's the same for all. The other thing I need to explain is the actual power structure of these wires. So with the actual servo, you have this orange or light yellow colored wire and what that is is actually your signal wire the one in the center is actually voltage and then the one on the outside which is somewhat brown would be the ground so to hook this up we need to verify what the actual pins are first so what I'm going to do is actually take you over to the web browser to see what's going on with this. So I'm going to bring up the actual design document for pins and show you what it looks like. So here's the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4 pinout diagram. It's on the GitHub web page for Big Tree Tech. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look over here and we have power detect which is these three pins and as you can see it's five volts ground and then the pin number is 1.0 and this will make sense in just a moment when i bring up actual vs code so inside vs code what we need to do to configure this is actually open up vs code we're going to go to the open folder and inside here I have a download of the Marlin firmware that I pulled down just a couple of days ago. And as you can see, we're going to click on that, then the next Marlin folder because I've already extracted it. And then I'm going to select the folder. So inside this folder, what we need to do obviously first is set our default environment. That's why the platform io.ini comes up. And normally for that, you'll go to your ini folder, then you'll find your chipset. But I wanna show you a way to confirm what's going on first. So we're gonna to go to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here, we're going to search on SKR underscore, and that'll bring us down to the turbo board that I'm currently working with. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm also going to note that it's the chipset for the LPC 1769. So I'm going to minimize core, and then I'm going to minimize source for the moment. And I'm going to go over to configuration.h and I'm going to search on motherboard and I'm going to paste it over the ramps board. Then I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to change serial port to negative one. And then I'm going to search on num underscore servo. So once we have that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the comment by hitting the control button and the slash under the question mark. That'll take out the comment for you. And as you can see right now, it says three servos. We're actually gonna do two in this case. You can try three on your own. 
And uh, if it doesn't work out the way you planned, there's always my Discord channel where you can ask questions and people can help you out with the answers. So what we're going to do next is we're going to have to add a second delay for the second servo. So it's going to be 300 milliseconds. Otherwise, you might get a compiler error, at least in the older versions of Marlin. So now that we have that set, what we're going to do is we need to have a second servo. So we have to modify the pins file. So we're going to go to source. Then we're going to go to pins. And our chipset is LPC 1769. So I'm going to click on that. And inside here, we need to find our board, which is pins underscore BTT underscore SKR underscore V1 underscore 4 underscore turbo. And what it tells us here is there's an include file. So the issue with the include file is we need to look at that because that's where our pins are located. So it says that it's in the LPC 1768 directory. So we're going to minimize this and go over to the LPC 1768. And we're going to find the file for the SKR14. Inside here, you can tell that it shares pins. So we're going to highlight this right here for the servo. We're going to then copy it. And we're going to paste our second line for another servo. Then we're going to change the servo 0 to servo 1 for our index. And we need to change our pin because right now it's sharing the same pin. Now keep in mind if we do use the power detect pin, you won't be able to use that for something else. But in this case we know that it was P1 because it was 1.0. And that's the nomenclature that we're going to use for specifying the actual pin right there. So now that we have that set, we can set up our compile. So I'm going to minimize pins for a second, then source. Then I'm going to go over to platform.ini. And we know that this is the LPC 1769. But we can click on the INI file. And we can actually go over here and verify for our chipset. So you see LPC176x.ini. Inside here, it says that our chipset is right here. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to go back to the platformio.ini. And I'm actually going to paste it right here. So now that we have that set, we need to go back to the workbench. In order to do that, we need to set up our actual setup. So when I do this, what's going to happen is we're going to actually see what we need to configure. So we know what the actual pins are here for our signal, voltage, and ground. So to set this up, we're going to take these jumper wires in this case. And I'm going to use the red for the actual voltage. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it inside the voltage pin for where we would use power detect. Next, I'm going to take the ground pin and do the same. Now this might not work right out of the gate with jumper wires because they're not the best. But make sure that they're as well placed as you can. Now the last one's going to be signal, so we're going to take that, slide it in, and we're going to take this wire now and match them up. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do signal. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually flip this over so you can see better that I'm doing it the same way. And I'm going to slide it right into here. Then I'm going to take the actual voltage pin which is right here, and I'm going to slide that in here. And then finally, I'm going to do the ground pin. So once this is configured, we're actually going to run this off of the 5 volts power. So I'm going to place a little weight here to get this to stay down. And so I want to talk about this real quick. Normally you run this with direct power, 
which would be over here. It would be the two pins that run off your power supply for here. But seeing how we're doing it with five bolts just to demonstrate, I'm gonna place it over here. So I'm gonna take the USB and I'm going to plug it in over here. And then I'm gonna go back over to VS Code. And inside here, what I wanna do first is actually do a clean. So I'm gonna click on the garbage can. That will clear out anything that's in the .pio folder that was from something previous. Next, what I'm gonna do is actually do a build and upload, which basically is a build, but in this case, it also uploads to our board. So I'm gonna click on that. This may take a few moments to actually compile, but that's fine. And then what we'll do after that is actually go over to platform IO and verify that there's actually a build in here. So if you go to the chipset, you can see that it's building as we speak. And what you'll see is firmware.bin. So we can actually confirm that that came over by bringing up our folder for the D drive in this case, and I'll show you what that looks like. So we have the D drive right here, and you can see there's firmware.bin. Inside here, there's also firmware.cur. Now the cur in this case is current, even though it's a cursor type file, they rename it cur to mean that it was the last firmware.bin that loaded. So if you ever wanna reload your previous build, you'll rename it to what's above and it'll reload for you. But you have to save that off if you wanna keep track of it. So now that we have that set up, what we're going to do is actually go over to VS Code and make sure that everything is there. So it looks pretty good right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to set up the actual configuration for interface so you can see what's occurring but before I do that I need to actually power cycle the actual board over here so I'm going to remove then I'm going to plug it back in so you can see this so I took out the USB now I'm going to place it back in and that'll load the firmware for us next what I'll do is I'll actually go over to Pronterface and we'll try this out but some things you need to learn, the reason that I actually use Pronterface is so that we can actually test what we're doing. So it's really simple to work with. I'll put a link in the description for your convenience, but I'll show you what it looks like now. So inside Pronterface, right now it says COM port one, and it says that the speed is a quarter million bits per second. One of the problems we're gonna run into is we need to know what COM port it is. So I'm gonna go over to the computer's desktop for a second and pull it up for you. So what I'm gonna look for is actually device manager, which you probably can't see me pulling up, but I'll bring it over to the screen so you can see. And you see how it says COM port one, and then there's COM port seven. COM part one is native to the computer where this is a USB device. So we're gonna close this. We're gonna go over to the COM port and we're going to say that it's seven and then we're gonna connect. So now that we have that set up, what we can do is actually test the servo. So the command for that's a little different and I need to actually show you what that looks like. So I'll bring that up and let you see what I'm talking about. So over here, we have the Big Tree Tech GitHub, but we're gonna go over to Marlin, and inside Marlin, we're gonna go to Help, and then we're gonna go to G Codes, and we're gonna do All. Now, the easiest way to find it is do a Control F and search on Servo. So we have M280. So if we go to this command, you'll see M280, then you'll see P, the index number, and then you'll see S in the position. So the index number is something like either zero or one in this case, but we're not using servo zero, we're using servo one. 
and then position will be the angle. So in this case, if we do 45 degrees. So we're going to go back over to Proner Face and try this out. So in Proner Face, what we're going to do is we're going to type M280. Then we're going to say P. Then we're using the first servo, not the zero servo, because it's, the counting starts at zero. Then we're going to say S. And we're going to say the angle is 45 degrees. And then we'll hit enter. So it didn't work. And the reason that it probably did not work has to do with the actual pins being possibly loose. So let's check the connections real quick here. We have power. So I'm going to make sure that everything's seated OK. Sometimes these connectors for jumpers are not perfect. And so we'll try this again. It looks like the ground is a little loose. There we go. So the issue that I had was that the ground pin was not fully seated correctly. So now that we know that was the issue, we can see if we can move it back to the zero position by hitting S0 and then hitting Enter. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.